talk about, uh, you'll, I'll, I'll uh, say some things that you probably, uh, that may not sit well with us, but there's something that uh, has to be done in this time that we come back. Uh, there's a reason why the Lord had the church sitting out as well, because there's some, some things that we had to get in place. Uh, I was asked what I'm going to talk about tonight, and I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, I, I can sum it up by saying that I'm going to talk about control in the church. I'm going to talk about, and in control, if you don't understand what I mean by control, I'm going to talk about order. Uh, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about with order, uh, you just stay with me for a little bit, uh, and you'll see what, what I'm talking about. One of the things that I want to point out to us uh, right away is this, and, and again, I'll go into one of my introductions that'll help us understand uh, what I'm about to talk about. Um, I, I got here uh, tonight th by violence, by violence, and I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The violence is sitting out there in the parking lot. I went out uh, knowing that we had to be at church tonight to, um, because it's Wednesday night, we had to be at church tonight. I went out and, and uh, set violence in motion in sequences, set violence in motion. And when I set the violence in motion, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. When I set the violence in motion, um, I had to set the violence in motion because the violence had to take, overtake some physics by force. In other words, gravity and inertia. And what I'm talking about is I drove here in a car. There's a law of gravity that would have kept the car running or kept the car sitting in, in its place. But when I set the the violence, the explosions in sequence, there's explosions in, in the engine. When I set the explosions in sequence, um, then it became, the, the whole thing became violent. And I sit inside the violence. I sit inside the violence because the violence was about to be controlled. When, and in controlling the violence, the violence overtook. The violence tooketh by force. Uh, the violence overtook gravity. In other words, I, I backed out of my driveway with the explosions, with the violence. And backing out of my driveway, I not only took uh, gravity by force, I broke the law of gravity by force. I also broke through the air, the wind, and the uh, the force that would uh, keep me from moving, inertia that would keep me from moving. And so I, I arrived here by violence taken by force. Uh, in other words, a car. And it was, I had to do it that way. I didn't want to walk to church. And even if I walked to church, I would have also broken laws of physics because I, uh, because it would have still, I would have still had to overtake uh, gravity by force. Gravity would have kept me there. Uh, and so, in other words, in other words, uh, I, I controlled, I controlled what, what would have been dangerous, what would have been dangerous, uh, the explosions under the hood, I controlled them. The, uh, and by controlling them, I, uh, I used them for a purpose to get me down to the church tonight. I used what, what could have been violence, what could have been chaos. What, uh, another thing that I want to point out in the introduction is if you take a, a bomb, a bullet, it, this is actually an, in, an excerpt from my, the book that I've, I've written uh, my last my last book that I've written. If you take a, a bomb or a bullet or whatever, 
they're actually they're actually dangerous, very dangerous, if they're not controlled. If they're not controlled, uh, a bomb can be an explosive that could blow blow you up, blow up uh, any material thing, blow up anything. Uh, but under control, it can be controlled to blow up what the the one that takes control of it uh, decides to blow up. Uh, a bullet the same way inside a gun is dangerous, except that it's controlled. And when you control it, you take you put the danger in under control under some sort of and my uh, the last part of what I uh, what I said I was going to talk about is leadership. If you understand what I'm saying, so in other words, a bullet. Looking at a bullet, a, I, I thought to bring one, but a bullet could be very dangerous because inside it is an explosive, and when you hit that primer on the bullet. It's dangerous. It explodes, uh, but uh, it, when you control it, it uh, it's not as dangerous. And I I say that because, and here's one of the things that I'm I'm going to say that you might not like, or you might not agree with, but I, I'm going to say this, and I've said I've said it in my book as well, is that a lot of our our churches are out of control because they have no control. And here's the reason why, and I'll, I'll come back and explain this as well. Here's the reason why. I asked somebody not long ago, I, in fact, we were talking not long ago, and, and in our talking, I'm, I'm trying to hurry up, in our talking, um, I, I, I said, I said, what is that guy like? Uh, they, they said, well, I've, I've, I've heard them preach they must be pretty good and I said that's not saying a whole lot because you've heard them preach and and here's one of the things that I said in a book that uh, and and I would have titled this preaching or pastoring just because you can preach it doesn't mean that you can pastor and uh, here's one of the here's what I said in the book I said that we it, there's a misstep in what in what we do our practices and we've been practicing practicing this for a long time when we go on a pastor search committee what we call a pastor search committee we go to listen to the person preach but because you've heard the person preach it doesn't mean that the person can pastor doesn't mean that the person can pastor a church because they can preach um, the uh, a pastor is multi-dimensional. One of the things may be that they can preach, but that's not everything. And I back up to say this: when I said that our churches, a lot of our churches, are out of control, and the reason why they are out of control is because uh, we've chosen throughout the years we've chosen pastors or leaders for the church according to their preaching and it doesn't mean that they can pastor because they can preach are you following what i'm saying uh in fact sometimes you'll find that pastors have some preachers under them that can't pastor the church but they can preach are you following what i'm saying and sometimes some of the preachers inside the church can out preach I just put it in our words can out preach the pastor uh, and and so and it would be the pastor's uh, skills to be able to choose to choose the uh, preachers to preach for them. Are you following? What I'm saying, in, in other words, use them inside the church to do the preaching, do some preaching. Are you following? What I'm saying, and uh, I I say that because. Um, I go into just another short introduction. I um, some years ago, some years ago, I uh, got called to my boss's office. Some years ago in Texas, when I was working in Texas, I got hired to be a leader, and I got called to my boss's office first thing in the morning that morning. And I thought my boss was going to 
going to uh, pat me on the back and, and uh, be all excited about what I did, but, what, but my boss did what we call, uh, what we call in, in my workplace at that time, chewed me out, uh, told me off, told me if I ever did this again, he would, he would fire me. And the reason for that was that he told me he hired me to be a leader and not a worker. What I did was I went out on a job with the guys that worked for me. I went out on a job with the guys that worked for me and thought I was doing a great thing by showing them that I can go out and work with them. But my boss told me to never do that again. He hired me to be a leader. He didn't hire me to be a worker. He knew I could work. I worked through the years and and got promoted to be a leader. And now I'm a leader, not a worker. If he wanted me to be a worker, he would have hired me to be a worker. And and I it took me a while, but I understood that because uh, part of my qualifications should have been that I could be a leader to choose workers to work for me. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, I, I wasn't trying to prove anymore that I could be a worker. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, I, 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 to finish this quickly, I go into this. In the body of Christ, uh, in your Bible, we talk about an outpouring. And in the outpouring, in the book of Acts, in the outpouring, there was giftings and callings that were poured out. There were uh, multitudes of people and, and in this day and time, there's multitudes of gifting inside the church. There's, there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and on and on. And in all of that, everybody's got a gifting. Everybody's a preacher. Everybody, uh, everybody is hearing from God. In all of that, uh, it's it. Uh, if you go back to my introduction again, with all of that horsepower, with all of that, and no direction, no purpose behind it, it could be dangerous. And it, it, out of control, with all of that gifting, with all of those callings, it could be dangerous. Are you following what I'm saying? And, it's to, and God pointed it out because in your Bibles, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, it, when, when they pointed out, God, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? And on and on. he said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know you not. In other words, they were attempting to impress God by their giftings, by the giftings and the callings that were inside that were doing the work in his name. But he, he said they were workers of iniquity. In other words, they, they, were, they were not being led. They were not under any kind of order or leadership or in any kind of control at all. So uh, giftings, giftings out of control can be dangerous. Callings out of control can be dangerous. Are you following what I'm saying? And in our churches, oftentimes we have giftings and callings and, and no, no control. In your Bibles, in the book of uh, Psalms 133, and one through three, <clears throat> when it says brother dwelling together in unity and uh, uh, Matthew chapter 18, it talks about uh, agreeing, touching and agreeing uh, and he'll be in the midst when they touch and agree uh, uh, in, in Psalms 133 to verse three, he says it's blessing us where there's unity, where there's agreement and unity. Are you following what I'm saying? And so, in other words, you can have all of the giftings, all of the talent inside the church. And it's a strange thing that we have all of the horsepower we have. We have all of the callings. If, if you would search a church, if you would come to a church on a Sunday morning, you'd find a license from the front to the back. Folks are licensed to do whatever they do. They get gifting. They can pray for you. They can do this and do that. But it's chaos oftentimes. Why? Because it's out of control. There's no control. The subject can do it anytime. They want to do it and on and on. And, and each one of them oftentimes in our churches have their own little following, have their own little membership inside the church. Are you following saying inside the church so it's out of control? Can you imagine the giftings that were poured out 
the giftings that poured out the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers of faith, the works, the works that's poured out and on and on. Can you imagine them being controlled and under leadership, being under agreement, being one, having a purpose, having vision, doing the work of the Lord? Are you following what I'm saying? All together as one? They could turn the world upside down. Are you following what I'm saying? But the problem is, is like uh, in the book of Genesis 11 chapter, if you get them all speaking one, but you scatter them, you scatter them and they're, they're all different. They're all doing it, their own thing. Are you following what I'm saying? They get nothing done. It's, it's uh, oh, wait a minute. There's another word that's involved there in your Bibles in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, confusion. They do not fuse. And God says he's not the author of confusion. Are you following saying? In other words, he doesn't authorize confusion. Are you following saying? And so, and so oftentimes we'll find our church is gifted. All of the gifts and callings inside the church, but out of control. No, no control at all. Are you following saying no leadership at all? Why? Because the way we chose our leadership in the first place was a misstep. In other words, we chose them because they could preach. Doesn't say that they can lead. Doesn't say that they can organize. Doesn't say that they can put together and, and, and bring and produce unity. Are you following saying? Oftentimes producing division more than anything. In fact, I, I'm gonna say this in, in myself and, and I've never done this before because I was raised in the military. I've never done this before, but I, I so in other words, what I'm talking about it, I've never talked a, against a president before in my life, except for this time. I'm gonna say that we have a leader now that's producing more division than anything. That's producing more division. In fact, it hurts me to even look at him because he's producing division. Uh, a leader is supposed to produce vision and uh, produce unity. Are you following what I'm saying? And if you could ever bring the gifting, all of this horsepower together and one purpose, one goal, uh, you could drive to the parking lot on a Wednesday night with violence, and violence can overtake it. Are you following by force? Are you following saying the force of the violence is now under control? You've mastered the chaos. Are you following saying, watch this. And see, we have a problem with that because of this. Uh, uh, I hope you understood when I said that God doesn't authorize confusion. I hope you saw this. Watch this. In, in your Bibles, in uh, <clears throat> Numbers chapter 11 and verse 16, but mostly Numbers chapter 11, um, Miran and Aaron thought that they could overtake Moses thought that they could overtake Moses. Moses was to be in the leadership, in leadership. And they thought that they could overtake Moses and, and being, uh, because Miriam, after all, was a prophetess. And Aaron was, after all, the priest. And so uh, they heard from God as well. But God called a meeting to order in Numbers chapter 11. Are you with me? In Numbers chapter 11, God called a meeting together and, and where God would call a meeting together. And I also talked about 16 because in 16, Moses had the same trouble in chapter 16 had the same trouble and God called another meeting and proved. But God called a meeting and told this prophetess and told this priest, Aaron and Miriam, that wait a minute, you might be a prophetess, I'm paraphrasing, you might be a priest, but, but I'm not the author of confusion. I speak to Moses mouth to mouth. You should have been afraid to come against him. Watch this. I, I, I'm also going to say, talk about this as well. And 
uh, I, I won't be before you long, like I said before. Watch this. Uh, God points out that even in David, in David, as he chose David to be king. He points out in Psalms 89 and 24, he, he points out that I'll stick up for David. I, I don't care if you do think he's a little boy. I don't care what, if you know where he came from, I'll stick up for him. In other words, in other words, I chose him. I chose my servant. I chose him. And I need to point out to you that if God chose, chose the leadership, God's going to stick up for him. And, and he, God, at the same time, is looking at all of his horsepower. All of the gifting, all of the calling out of control. In other words, confusion won't fuse, won't come together in unity. Watch this. I'm going to show you something that God uh, points out to us here that we should take a good look at. That God points out and I'll be done. At, in, in your Bibles in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 34. Saul is the king at this point. Saul is the king at this point. And it's a strange thing. We might not have seen this, but David points out to Saul that first, Saul, I'm your servant. And David says to Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. Saul, David is submitting himself. He's gifted. Are you following what I'm saying? David is gifted, but Saul is the king, and David has enough now to understand that Saul is in leadership. And because I'm gifted, because I'm 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 all of this, I I can't overstep my bounds. I can't step out of my lane. And and David points out, your servant, talking to Saul kill a lion and a bear. In other words, he's gifted enough to overtake. Saul couldn't kill the lion and the bear. Saul was afraid of the Goliath. But though you might be able to outdo the leadership in one thing, David is pointing out to you, I still serve you. I'm still submitted to you. In other words, I don't want to have to deal with God when God appointed this man as leader up to this point. I'm not going to come against leadership. Are you following what I'm saying? And knock this out of control. Because in, God's work in control can do much more than we could ever do. Are you following what I'm saying? And so, and so God, God is for control. Unity. Good and pleasant it is. Unity. He's in the midst of. When you touch and agree and on and on. Are you following what I'm saying? He's in the midst of. He, God is in the middle of. And so, and so, in other words, I'm pointing out to you that, that one of the things that has to happen when the saints of God come back together. Yes, we're some anointed, gifted, called folks. But it's no good if it's out of control. Are you following what I'm saying? My car out in the driveway would have been no good if, if I turned that key and had those explosions under the hood, sit in it, and it killed me. Are you following what I'm saying? And it killed me. Would have been no good. And so, in other words, in other words, what I'm pointing out, even in that demonstration with the bullet, with the car, how you can take violence and use the force of violence for purpose. Are you following what I'm saying? For purpose. Uh, it, it's parked out in the, in the parking lot right now. It's violent. In, in, fact, in fact, I can take it apart and stick my hand on one of the wires for the spark plugs or whatever, and it would knock me down. Why? Because I've taken it out of order. I, I'm, I'm no longer controlling it. 
it'll start to control me. Are you following what I'm saying? It'll, it'll, it could kill me. Are you following what I'm saying? And so, and so what has to happen is in, it's awesome in itself when we're packed with all of the giftings that we have. Man, I, I can understand. And I, I remember one time, uh, I remember one time as a, in my early days as pastoring, I was pastoring the church years ago, 20 something years ago or so. And uh, a guy and his wa wife walked in the back and they were, they were preachers. They were preachers and they're not here now. They're, they left and gone to some other state or whatever. So if you're trying to figure out who I'm talking about, but, but uh, they, they looked around and they said, they said, uh, Rankin seemed to have this place under control. In fact, two, two sets of people said that both of them are gone now. Uh, one was a prophetess and one was a preacher and his wife. And both of them said, Rankin got this under control. In fact, what they were saying was, I can't sit in here. I, I can't be a member of this church. In other words, they wanted something out of control so they could flex their wares. Are you following what I'm saying? And it's a strange thing in itself. It's a strange thing in itself. We do that. We do that in a lot of places as well. Uh, I was expected, and I learned uh, back in the first introduction that I gave, I learned, and, and from uh, then on, as I worked on my jobs, I, when I found out what a leader was, sometimes people didn't like me, but I led. I led. And, and the reason why a lot of times the people didn't like me is because they didn't like to be led. Are you following what I'm saying? But I knew what it would be like if, if we weren't led. If we had all of that, it would be dangerous. If we had all of the horsepower, if we had all of the talent that we had, and we had no, if it was out of control, it would have been dangerous to all of us. Are you following what I'm saying? It would have been dangerous to all of us. But I realized, I realized and I knew right off the bat that if we take what we have, looking around, and all of the giftings, all of how valuable this would be towards purpose if we took all of this and directed it, controlled it. Are you following what I'm saying? And controlled it. I know how we feel when we've been called, when we have an anointing. When we have an anointing, we want to flex it. And we want folks to know that we're anointing. We want folks to know that we're gifted. And on and on. But we're at the point now where folks are tired of our giftings not working. Like they're supposed to work. Our callings not working like they're supposed to. All I'm saying is, if we, is that if we get some sort of direction with these gifts and callings. If we get some sort of direction with it. Lord have mercy what would the church be like. Are you following saying if David could, could commit, submit to Saul, his gifting to be able to kill a lion and a bear. And Saul couldn't do it. And that's what we do quite often. I'm going to let Lady Rankin start coming up. That's what we do quite often. I had a few more things that I, I wanted to say, but I, I won't say them right now. Uh, we'll get them sooner or later because uh, we, we preach long enough in one place. We'll start repeating ourselves. We'll start saying stuff over and over again. But huh, I want to say to us that what God wants us to do is master all of the gifting, all of the outpouring that he had inside the church. And we'll give the enemy fits. Come on. We'll give the enemy fits. Lady Rankin's going to come at this time and talk about what we need to do to come back to church. And I'm excited about what we're going to do.